Thank you, Terry. Thank you very much. Thank you too. <laughs> How did you feel with your first guitar in your hands? Well, I've been playing piano for many years. So I knew how to read music and uh, then I played trumpet in a school band. And uh, then I was uh, at my cousin's farm and my aunt there, she had a guitar. So I just started uh, asking to, to play with it. It felt very really nice. About the same time I uh, discovered the shadows. Took some time for a uh, guitar that, uh, that was comfortable. So, uh, so the guitar is always a struggle. Struggle in the beginning you know, to get blisters. And, uh, so uh, it was not really a love at first time. <laughs> but, uh, uh, because of the, the shadows, and everybody wanted to make groups in Norway, and I went to a teacher to, to learn a little bit of playing guitar. But after uh, one lesson, he said, "No, no, um, we don't do this. Let's start a band." <laughs> <laughs> so that was happened. I read that you have been influenced, among others, by Ligeti and Penderecki and Jimi Hendrix. Yes. Uh, yes. They, they seem, it seems, uh, far away stars. What do you think about that? <laughs> Ligeti was because of the movie 2001. And then, then I found, found, found Ligeti's name, name, name and uh, went to the store. And they didn't have me, but they, they had Penderecki. So I said for that too. And I've been so lucky to uh, Penderecki. I say uh, I know quite well. I played with them, uh, but Ligeti I only visited once in Berlin because I was studying uh, composition, and I, I was trying to get an analyze of the Kyrie from the historian, very different. And I got the address from the store uh, uh, and went there. He was there and said, okay, I can give you 10, 15 minutes. And he also spoke Swedish uh, at the time. I had been a professor there. So it was Swedish and uh, all languages. <laughs> And then he, I spent over an hour there because he could remember what I had done. So it was a fantastic lesson. I was just watching him. Uh, <laughs> so, so, uh, and Jimmy Hendrix, and uh, uh, we knew about very uh, uh, immediate. The first album came. And uh, the, this is the beginning of a dream group, uh, which, which I was invited uh, in. Um, so, so live we played almost half of the first album. And we wrote a tribute tune to him, and uh, sent, when the dream album came out, I sent a copy to him because there was a girl who was going to Sweden, and she was a friend of uh, one of the many girlfriends of Jimmy Hendrix. <laughs> But he got it, and I didn't know it ever had happened to it. But in 2005, somebody bought his record collection. And that album, with my writing notes, is now in the Julie Hendrix Museum in London. Uh, 
you always have been engaged in composing for large ensembles and orchestra. Do you have a particular approach with this kind of work? Recently finished uh, the composition called Mediterranean, starting with a great flood, swing the flood in the region, and uh, ending up in Stromboli, the, the volcano. So, so hope to get that performed somewhere around. I really love the Mediterranean. So, um, but then I had the idea for, for maybe not two years now. But I couldn't decide on the large amount of the orchestra. So I thought, okay, then I, I'll just start making a sketch and see what I need. And that, that's, that, that was new to me to do it that way. And the last two versions is one version where uh, Stoller and myself can improvise on top of it. There's nothing much written about it, but but it would also be the first movement in my ninth symphony. So they, it's a bit connected. Yeah. have any kind of inspirational sources but it seems that you have chosen a huge one that is nature yeah I'm moved to and my father was born to the surrounded by, by uh, mountains and, and wild animals and we had once a bear crossing because we found the tracks and the sprinkling but we have um, deers and um, so a big cat with a very yeah, short yeah. tail. Uh, yeah. Not all the time, but, but uh, the, 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 the wabbies are there uh, many times. I opened the window and talked to one who came in three little ones, two years ago. And then they started to they stopped up and I talked to them for 15 minutes. Well, it just started to slowly walk, uh, not afraid at all. <laughs> Big moment. And what did you learn? from your music and from your musical experience? Well, it was a curse because I hadn't planned to be a musician. <laughs> <laughs> My father was a military musician and said you, you probably have a hard time making a living. Hmm. So it's, and then all these things happened, especially with the dream. And, and the next thing that I wanted to start composing at the end of the start of the dream, Jan Babarik and Jon Kissens were members of that band for three months. Then they invited me to the Jan Babarik, the African Pepper Quartet. And then ECM started there. And I made a tune for the, the Sartan, the second Jan album, called Something Mars has heard on the same which which is Keep it like that, tight. Yes. I was very happy with it. I mean, it's, it is released, but but Jan thought it didn't fit uh, that concept. And Manfred saw that I was very disappointed. So he said, Ah, oh, don't tell me, tell me. You can make your own album. <laughs> so then I started and quit Jan, Jan's band. And, this is that kind of snowballing thing. Uh... Thank you very much, Terry. Thanks a lot. Thank you.